Okay, this is the 11020 class, and we are going to do a section from the Brief Lovers book. This is page 78 and 79. And it's not two boys. I'll just go over them quickly. We will go there in just a minute. Will you wait just a minute, please? Will you wait just a second? Just a minute, please. I need to ask you more questions. I will be with you in just a second. Would you be willing to wait just a moment, please? I will be there in a minute. David and Sally will be there in a moment. Could you be here in a minute, please? I will be there in a moment. Please be patient. Could you hold on just a second, please? Will you stop talking for just a minute, please? The trial will start in just a second. The deposition will be over in just a moment. Just a moment. You need to sign this letter before you leave. I will be with you in just a second. Before you go, do you have just a second to give some spelling to the court reporter? Would you save my place for just a second, please? It will take just a moment to mark this exhibit. Wait a minute and think before you answer. Wait a moment, please, until I complete my question. Wait a minute, please, until everyone is seated before we eat. Wait a moment. The reporter needs time to mark the exhibit. Take just a minute, please, to review your answers to interrogatories. In a minute, please, I need to review this exhibit. I will be with you in a moment. Just a minute, please. Would you tell me again your date of birth? Just a moment, please. We need to wait for the reporter to get back. We'll be back on the record in just a minute. Court will begin in just a moment. I will have my secretary copy the exhibit in just a minute. All right, this is some two-voice practice from the Brief Lovers book. It begins with a question for the record. State your name for the record, please. James Miller, Jr. Where do you live? I live at 234 B Ridge Road, Sarasota, Florida. How old are you at the present time? I am 39 at this time. What is your date of birth? It's April 14, 1974. Where are you employed? I'm employed as the advertising manager for the newspaper. What happened on the day of the accident? At the time of the accident, I was driving to work. Did a police officer come to the scene of the accident? Yes, sir. Was it a policeman or policewoman? I think it was three policemen. How many motor vehicles were involved in the accident? I believe it was three or four motor vehicles and one motorcycle. Will you please tell us where the accident happened? It was the corner of US 41 and Clark Road. How fast were you going at the time of the accident? I was going 45 miles per hour. What information did you give the officer? 
I gave him my driver's license. Did you have any other identification on you? I don't recall. Did an ambulance come to the scene of the accident? Yes, the fire department was there also. Was there damage to your automobile? Yes, ma'am, there was damage. Would you please tell us, if you could, still operate your car? No, ma'am, I could not. Were you in the middle of the intersection? I saw the other car come through the red light. So you had a green light? I don't remember. Oh, yes, I did. As far as possible, tell us the speed of the other motor vehicles. They were all going over 50 miles an hour. Was anyone taken to the police station for DUI? Uh-huh. Were you taken to the hospital? Uh-huh. Did the police officers do an investigation of the scene of the accident? I can't remember. Were your children in the car with you? No, ma'am. Is your office on Tuttle Avenue? Yeah. What is your driver's license number? I don't know. Did you remember your social security number? Yes, ma'am. The social security I know by heart. Okay, this is more brief practice from the Calling All Brief Letters book. Jill Tins. Yes. Begins with a question for the record. State your name for the record, please. Anne Bell. What is your present address? 2345 Ringling Boulevard. That's here in Sarasota, is that correct? That's correct. How long have you lived at that address? I've lived there all my life. And how old are you, Anne? I'm 17. You live with your parents, is that correct? Yes, sir, I do. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, sir, I do. What are their names and ages? Lisa is 14 and Mark is 10. So you are the oldest? Yes, I am. Are you in high school, Anne? Yes, sir, I am. What high school do you go to? Booker High School. Are you a junior? Yes, sir, I am. Are you in the performing arts program at Booker High? Yes, sir, I am. Are you a singer? I do sing, but I also dance and am in drama. So you would like to be an actress? Yes, sir, but I'm going to go to college first. Good for you. Do you work at all? I work part-time at Publix. And I'm here to ask you some questions about an automobile accident. Yes, sir. Do you remember the date of the accident? Yes, it was June 10, 2009. What time did it happen? It happened approximately 9.30 p.m. What day of the week was that? It was a Saturday. Where were you coming from, Anne? I was coming from work. Had you just gotten off of work? Yes, sir. And where were you going? I was going to my girlfriend's house. Was anyone in the car with you? No, sir. I was alone. What street were you traveling on? I was on Tuttle Avenue. How fast were you going? I was stopped at the time of impact. Tell me how the accident happened. I was stopped at the red light and the other car hit me in the rear end. What light were you stopped at? On Tuttle at the corner of Bahia Vista. How long were you stopped at the light? Just a couple of seconds. Were the other cars stopped ahead of you? No, sir. Did you see the other car behind you before he hit you? I saw a car coming up behind me. How far away was he when you first saw him? I don't know. 
did he have his headlights on? I don't recall. What happened to your car after the impact? I was pushed into the intersection. Then what happened? A car coming on the Kia Vista hit the left front end of my car. So you were hit by two cars? Yes, sir. Were you injured? Yes, sir. Did an ambulance come to the scene of the accident? Yes, sir. What hospital were you taken to? Sarasota Memorial Hospital. Did the police come to the scene of the accident? Yes, there were several police cars at the scene of the accident. What happened to your car? It was totaled. Where was it damaged? In the rear end and the left front end of the car. Was it towed from the scene of the accident? Yes, the police towed it somewhere. Was there damage to the car behind you? I don't know. He left the scene of the accident. The car that hit you in the rear left the scene of the accident? Yes, sir. Do you remember the make or color of the car? It was a dark blue Dodge pickup truck. And a man was driving the pickup? Yes, sir. Can you describe the man? He had on a white t-shirt and his head was shaved. Did you ever find out who he was? Yes, sir. The police caught him as they were coming to the scene of the accident. And that would be in the police report? Yes, sir. He was arrested for driving under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Do you know if he was brought to trial? Yes, sir. He was. Do you know if he was convicted? Yes, sir. He was. What was the other car that hit you? It was a white car. Do you know the make of car? It was a Ford Taurus. So you left the scene of the accident in the ambulance? Yes, I did. What were your injuries? My head was bleeding a lot. Did your head hit something in the car? My head hit the steering wheel very hard. Were you wearing a seatbelt? Yes, sir, I was. Were you knocked out? I don't think so, but I was in shock. Were you put on a stretcher at the scene of the accident? Yes, sir, I was. Did the paramedics treat you at the scene of the accident? Yes, sir, they stopped the bleeding. Did they call your parents? They called my parents on the cell phone. Did your parents come to the scene of the accident? Yes, sir. They followed the ambulance to the hospital. How long were you in the hospital? About two weeks. Did you have any other injuries? Yes. I have a broken left arm. Anything else? They put stitches in my head. Anything else? My chest was very bruised and my ribs were cracked. Did you have x-rays taken at the hospital? Yes, I had several x-rays taken. Did you miss any time from school? Yes, I was in the hospital for two weeks. So you missed two weeks of school? No, I missed five weeks of school. And why was that? Well, I still couldn't sit up or walk very far when I got home. So you were still hurting? Yes, but I started physical therapy and that helped. What kind of physical therapy? Well, walking on the treadmill and leg and arm lifts. And did that seem to help? Yes, it did. My arm felt better. Did you go back to work? Not right away. As soon as my arm was strong enough, I went back. 
What about the cut on your hand? I still have a scar right here. And you are pointing to your head over your left eye? Yes, sir. Did the doctor tell you that scar was permanent? Yes, sir, but she said it would fade a little. Does it still hurt you? A little. It's still red and it hurts if I touch it. Did you get behind in your schoolwork? I kept up with most of it. Could you go back to dancing and singing? No, sir. And why was that? I couldn't dance because I was still stiff and sore. And why couldn't you sing? Well, I suppose I could sing in the shower, but I couldn't do it on stage at that time. So you were unable to go to that class? Yes. I had to drop out of the drama club. I can go back next year. Okay. Well, this will be some two voice practice at 120 words per one. minute. Oh, intend to say yes. Okay, it begins with the question for the record. Is it treadway or tread away? It's treadway, W A Y. T R E D T R E A D W A Y. Thank you, sir. Mr. Treadway, you recall the day of July 1, 1975? Yes, sir. And when this young lady was brought over there and placed in this room, did anyone in your hearing mention the name of this young man to her that you heard? No, sir. Did she, to your knowledge, did she see him before he started talking? No, sir. Or during the conversation, could she see him or did she see him? No, sir, it would be impossible from where she was sitting. All right, sir. And did anyone point him out to her at any time there in the building? No, sir. Did anyone point him out to her outside of the building? No, sir. After the conversation was over and you all were still in this room, were you waiting to make sure that he cleared the premises and the area before they went out? Yes, sir, and also to get her a soft drink. And also to get her a soft drink? Right, sir. Which she requested? Yes, sir. Well, we offered it to her. I see, all right. In the course of this wait, did she happen to amble over to the window on the Oregon Street side? Yes, sir. Was she directed to do that? No, sir. After being there some time, did she call to the attention of you and Officer Shepard the presence of Mr. Cox on the outside? And did she say, for instance, yonder he is? Yes, sir. She stated that she saw him outside. I see. Did you, at that time, step to the window? Yes, sir. Was she correct in her identification of the person you knew to be the defendant, in this case, George Houston Cox? Yes, sir. Back during the conversation after she started listening, what is your recollection of her identification of anyone in the next room? After the conversation began between Mr. Borden and Mr. Lever, the agents, and Mr. Cox, she listened approximately three to five minutes and said that she believed that was him. And about five more minutes, she said, I'm sure that's him. I'm positive that's him. I'm sure. I'm positive. Now, in this conversation, were you able to more or less hear it? I could hear the voices, but I was not paying any attention to what the conversation consisted of. I was more interested in remaining quiet 
so that Mr. Cox would not be aware that we were in the other office. I see. And observing her reaction and right, making sure she did not see him? Yes, sir. Mr. Treadway, when she said, that's him, how do you know which person it was in the other room, which voice it was she was identifying as being him? Well, I know Mr. Borden and Mr. Lever from having worked with them for two years, and I could hear the voice that she was speaking about at the time. All right. Their voices, of course, are not any way similar to Mr. Cox's voice? No, sir. All right. So there was only one voice in the room with a southern accent? I'm from the south, so I'd... Yeah, I'd say so. All right. But I still don't understand how she said, that's him. How you knew which voice it was she was saying, that's him. Because he was talking at the time. Because he was talking at the time? Right. Were you close enough to be listening to hear what he was saying? I could hear. You'd have to see the building to appreciate it. The walls are approximately one foot thick. The door's a wooden door, but it was cracked slightly. As I previously stated, I know Mr. Borden and Mr. Lever from having worked with them. He was talking at the time or on every occasion when she would indicate that I believe it's him, that's him, I'm positive it's him, he was the only person talking. He was the only person talking? And she was, and I did question her at that time, was she referring to the person talking? And she said yes. All right. And you say the walls are approximately one foot thick? I'd estimate that. Masonry walls? Masonry, right. Masonry walls? Right. And a wooden floor? Wooden door. Solid wooden door? Solid wooden door. With a little crack just about a quarter of an inch, half an inch? About that, but it was no problem to understand the voices clearly. How far away were the people from the door when they were talking? Four feet. You know where Mr. Cox was? Well, he had more or less prearranged the room as far as where the chairs would be. Well, how were they arranged? Well, the three chairs in the, what you have termed the radio room or Mr. Borden's office, and then our chairs in my room so that she would sit next to the door, almost next to the door, but not the same. I'd say from where she was sitting to where they were would be no more than four feet. How close were the three of them sitting? Right side by side or two facing one? It was in a circle. In a circle? Right. Where did Mr. Cox sit? I don't remember. You don't remember? I didn't see it, so I don't remember. You didn't see it, so you don't know how it was arranged. As far as where, who sat where? Well, see, we were in there, and I didn't see them come in. So I have no idea, no way of knowing. Yes, sir. Did you listen to what took place in the other room? As I said previously, I could hear the voices, but I'm really not sure of what transpired other than to say that there was a general conversation. Right. Before the conversation and all, was there activity in regard to taking some pictures and so forth? 
did we take pictures? Not you, but Mr. Borden or whoever was in the room. Not to my knowledge. All right, this will be some more practice, about 130 words per minute. Begins with a question for the record. So you've never used the spa? About six times. I've used it only about like three times. L. We finally emptied it last year. Al would use the spa before the incident? Oh, yes. Any other out-of-pocket expenses that you can recall? Well, it was just the fact of maintenance, you know. We've had to have a fellow come here. That has to... We've got a great big dish out there that somebody has to come and grease, which he used to do, and I know nothing about. Right now, we've got a faucet all summer out here on this deck that I haven't used because it needs fixing. I have put in a complete light fixture on the other, on the front of the house by myself. I put in a handle on the back door by myself just to save expenses. I put a grill on the back door and it's just daily expenses. I've never changed so many god dang light bulbs in my life as I've changed in these two and a half years. And that's something you would not have done prior to the incident? No. Do you have a particular individual that you pay to come and perform any sort of maintenance around the house? Anything that I have to do is the gentleman that was here today. He's a neighbor. And when I, you know, know what he's got a chance that he can come and not bother his schedule, and I ask him. So he'll do things in addition to taking care of the yard? Oh, yes, yes. He's, but you got to pay people. Any other expenses that you can think of? No. Have you ever gotten an individual to come and do house cleaning for you? No. Are you planning on doing that at some point? Not right at this point, no. Do you do all the house cleaning? When it gets done in my spare time, and I don't know when that is, yeah. Okay. Prior to the accident, would you be the primary individual to do the house cleaning? Oh, yes. It was much cleaner than it is today. Can you tell me about a typical day for now for you and Al? I get up every morning at 6.30, and if I'm taking care of him, I go out and take care of the dogs. Then I come in and... First thing you got to do is empty his catheter bag, and then you got to start cleaning him up, and you got to start dressing him, and you look for different sores on him, and, and we have to irrigate his penis twice a day, and we've been doing this since March, since they thought that would help, so we were using Renacidin, it's a medicine. And just two days ago, we switched to sodium chloride water that his new urologist has suggested. And then you get him dressed, and yes, you got to get him out of the bed into the wheelchair. And then I got to get breakfast. He can't as much as even get a dish out to help himself or anything. I can't put everything down low, which has been mentioned. And then about three times a week, I'm after prescriptions. That's something's been changed like the renacidin in the water. And I have to go get food. I have to see that there's gas in the two cars. I have to worry about, we've got an 88 blazer, and I have to see that it's taken to a mechanic if I don't think it's running right. And I don't know, I'm not a mechanic myself. 
And by the time I clean up the yard from the dogs and get lunch at noon and do dishes and try to clean around here, and it's time for another meal. And if Nina's not coming, then eight o'clock, I start getting him ready to put him in bed so we both can be in bed by nine o'clock to start another day. No fun. Do you observe Al during the day working on the computer? Oh, yes, yes. Does that take up a good portion of his day? Yes, thank goodness. What other activities do you observe Al doing during the day now? I've tried to buy him every tape for his VCR that I know that he'd enjoy because with the war going on, there hasn't been too much to watch on television except the news. So that's about all it leaves him. And he reads his Newsweek, waits for every Tuesday, and Reader's Digest. Any other activities that you see Al participate in during the day? No. On the days that the nurse's aide does not come to the house, are you the one to bathe Al? If he gets bathed, yes. It's hard for me because it hurts my back. Lots of times I use the towel wipes or bath wipes that the hospital has sent to clean which I always clean him off down below, and he's able to wash his face and hands. Would you say that this incident has placed a strain on your marriage with Al? Yes, can't help but, because no sex, affection comes with sex, and that's why he was so happy the prostate operation had turned out so great, because with most men his age it doesn't, and no affection. I'm a caregiver. I'm no different than the girl that Brian saw this morning that comes here that's taking care of him. When I get him out of bed in the morning and put him into bed at night, I am no different. I belong to caregiver organization and they hit it right on the head with their pamphlets. What organization is that? It's caregiver. Oh, that's the name of the organization? Uh-huh. Is that an organization that holds meetings? Someplace, but not in Delaware. But they have a newspaper that they send out. And yes, it certainly helps you out that it tells you just exactly what your life is, and that's what it is. How often do you receive this newsletter? Probably just every other month. Has there been any discussion between you and Al about divorce or separation? No. Anything like that? Not after all these years, for better, for worse, no. What would you like to see done for Al that is not currently being done? It would take off a lot of pressure if he could have physical therapy on a regular basis. It would be nice if he could have access to the homes of his children and then he could see his grandchildren. Actually, I think that's all the questions I have. Thank you very much.